Moving on, Moscow has issued orders to increase weapons and ammunition production. This comes in the wake of the passing of the $61 billion of military aid by U.S. President Joe Biden. That's the famous package that was blocked uh, in Congress uh, for many months. There are U.N. investigations underway to confirm if North Korean arms have been used by Russia, who already, of course, use Iranian Shahed attack drones to strike Ukraine's cities. So uh, Russia already has a supply coming in and is now seeking to, uh, it seems, almost double its spending uh, on weapons and ammunition. Let's bring in now for analysis uh, Jacob Halbron, who's editor of the National Interest magazine and from the Atlantic Council. Joining us live from Washington, D.C. Jacob, thanks for being with us. Um, how do you read this news about Russia increasing production? What do you see behind that? Well, Mr. Putin has decided to move in a totalitarian direction. And part of that is to put the entire Russian economy on a war footing and to greatly increase expenditures on armaments and neglect the economy, the larger economy and the Russian standard of living. And this is one of the things, isn't it? Because, yes, there will be people who work in those sectors and they you know, may, may get bonuses, they may earn money. But on the whole, as, as you just pointed out, that takes a lot of cash away from the broader public, doesn't it? It does indeed. And the Russian economy, while it has managed to uh, prosper more than I think the Biden administration initially predicted, I think the chickens are coming home to roost for Russia over the next year and, or two as Russian debts continue to mount and as more of the Russian resources are put into what is essentially a colossal waste of money. Are we essentially there then in, in a race against time? Because clearly the, the money that was blocked in Congress by the Trump caucus, let's call it that, uh, that $61 billion of, of military aid now coming to, going to uh, Kiev from, from Washington, that's going to happen. But it doesn't mean overnight that ammunition is there, does it? It doesn't mean overnight the resources are there. Russia too trying to now to boost their resources too. It, has it now basically become a race against time to get the, the troops armed to make progress on the battlefield? Definitely. And you can see that the Russians are trying to go on the offensive as quickly as they can. But the, Rus the, the uh, Ukrainians have been using these long range missiles that they've acquired from the United States and other countries to target Russia behind the lines. I understand that the Russians are now back to losing a thousand or more men a day. A thousand or more a day. It is an absolutely astonishing figure. Um, Lloyd Austin, Jacob, a few days ago. Uh, talking about the US Defence Secretary, um, has called on the countries that have, um, it sounds strange to say, but spare Patriot missile systems to donate them to Ukraine. Um, one wonders why this hasn't happened sooner, and will that be enough? It, it's never enough, but it's absolutely vital since Ukraine has been neglected for months, particularly by the United States, and the Russians have been systematically targeting the energy sector in Ukraine and definitely hurting the Ukrainian economy and the morale. With the new Biden package, I think Ukraine can reverse both the morale and its losses on the ground. We've had uh, this evening a strike uh, by Ukraine on the power sector in the Kursk region of Russia. We've had a Russian strike on the Nova Poshta Postal Company, uh, which uh, apparently has resulted in no casualties. Just a little update about what's happening, because things are still carrying on as we're talking, clearly. Um, this situation, of course, uh, and let's go back to what Vladimir Zelensky was saying when NATO jumped uh, to help Israel when Israel was being attacked by Iran. Um, without talking about whether, whether that was right or wrong, Zelensky was pointing out, of course, why can't the same favour be afforded to Ukraine? Should NATO do that? No, I think we do have to exercise some caution because we're talking about potentially becoming enmeshed in a direct conflict with Russia. That's the red line that... Joe Biden is never going to cross, but he has, he keeps pushing more and more. Sending the long range missiles to Ukraine is a definitely a much more aggressive move than he was willing to comp contemplate previously. Uh, that said though, on the, the Russian side of things, uh, there's evidence that for instance, North Korean missiles uh, may well have been used. The UN investigated an incident back in January and um, only just two days ago, Odessa attacked by what seemed to be a cluster bomb. Uh, clearly, uh, there, are, there is one set of rules being observed by one side of, the, of the, the war and a different set of rules on the other. Well, as you know, as Mr. Putin is a dictator and he shrinks at nothing. You, you gasp at the thousand number, but 
he's willing to sacrifice as many bodies as he thinks is necessary in this meat grinder of a war. I think that the Biden has managed to rally NATO. He's expanded NATO. He's gotten the arms package through to, through to Ukraine. Mr. Putin has stepped into an imbroglio that ultimately could still jeopardize his own rule on power. Jacob Halbron, thank you very much for joining us here in France 24. We appreciate your time, sir, and we appreciate your analysis. Jacob Halbron of the National Interest Magazine and of the Atlantic Council. Thank you once again for joining us. Thank you. We, of course, will be watching for all developments on the situation uh, in Ukraine. Next.